Merry Christmas. Those two words, for various reasons today, are sometimes looked down on. Merry Christmas. I want to first of all read to you about Christmas. Matthew 1 and verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not, take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the biblical account of Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, what's the problem saying Merry Christmas? Why are those two words today seemingly offensive to so many people? And there are businesses across this country who tell the employees, do not say Merry Christmas. You can sense this in your shopping. Some want to say it, but they back off and say Happy Holidays. So what's the big deal why many people insist on saying Happy Holidays? Let's move forward now to other days of the year. New Year's Day is not called a Happy Holiday. It's called New Year's Day. The President's Day is not called Oh, it's not called a happy holiday. It's the President's Day. Memorial Day is not called a happy holiday. It's called Memorial Day. How about July the 4th? It's not called a happy holiday. It's called July the 4th. Labor Day is not called a happy holiday. It's called Labor Day. So what is the problem and always this hush about Merry Christmas? It's something spiritual. It all comes down, not to flesh and blood, but to spiritual. We talk about Merry Christmas. Of course, across the nation, around the world, to many people, it's religious. They have no relationship with Christ. They have the trees. They do the shopping. We have downtown decorations. But the majority of people have no idea what they're celebrating. But us Christians that are treated like minorities in our country with, with no voice, Everybody seems like, well, let's, let's go ahead and do. Legally, they have these laws passed to offend or to get these Christians to be quiet. I'm referred to often as narrow-minded and old-fashioned. Because I believe there's one way to heaven. I, according to the Bible says that. I believe there's a hell in the heaven. People today say, well, you're just narrow-minded. Well, Christ was narrow-minded too in John 14. <laughs> he said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. He was narrow-minded too. And I believe the Bible is straightforward. And if you believe the Bible today, live by the Bible, you have a narrow-minded life. But going back to Thanksgiving. So why when we get to Thanksgiving to Christmas each year, all of this changes? I mean, even Thanksgiving. We begin now even earlier, and they say, uh, Happy Holidays. And even leave out Thanksgiving. And now many called it from the media, Turkey Day. So what's going on? So this narrow-minded preacher is going to tell you now again, this is spiritual when it comes to being thankful. Because the Bible says, in everything give thanks. You see, we are to be thankful. Not Turkey Day. Not just a day to overeat and get a nap in the living room. It's a day to be thankful. It should represent the whole year of Thanksgiving. Thanking who? Thanking God. Because the Bible said that every good and perfect gift that we have comes down from above. Not from Washington. Not from downtown. It comes from, uh, from the, our Father above. So I'm going to ask you a question. You have a birthday each year. I'm sure you do. If you're living. Now how would you feel when you celebrate your birthday someone says to you, Happy Holiday. You think about that. Your birthday and somebody says, Happy Holiday. And you say, man, it's my birthday. 
Let's go back now to what Christmas represents. We don't have the right date, but we have the right meaning. Christ is born of a virgin, laid in the manger. So let's go back again to Christmas as we celebrate his birthday. And in saying that, what do you plan to give him for Christmas? Since it's his birthday, and we celebrate his birthday, and you profess to be a Christian, what's on your list among all your shopping and all your charge accounts, all your charge cards, what do you have in mind to give him for his birthday? Now think about that. What can you give the one that owns the hills and the cows on them? What can you give the one who said, let there be, and there was? What can we give him? Or I want to ask the question now, what does he want from you and me? When it comes down to that question, do we have an answer? I believe in the word of God, we have an answer. What does he want from you and me? Not just 25th of December, but today, and every, what does he want? He wants my heart. He wants your heart. That's all he wants. You see, the Bible says believe in your heart. That's where, that's where it starts. If it gets your heart, he gets everything else. So not just for Christmas morning under a Christmas tree, but every day because of Calvary. Jesus Christ, I want your heart. Give me your heart. If you give me your heart, if I give him my heart, he's got everything else. You see, the Bible has a question also about his approach one day, Christ says, about the first and great commandment. He says to love God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your strength, and your neighbor as, as yourself. You see, it goes back to the heart. So today, not just wait to Christmas Day, but today as a Christian, just go before the Lord and give him your whole heart. You see, you don't have to pay for it. It's already been paid for. Everything that Christ wants from us is already been taken care of. So today, let's give him our heart. And the next few days, as we approach Christmas, let's say Merry Christmas. Don't do it now dogmatic. Don't do it with a hateful attitude. Do it as a Christian. Merry Christmas with a smile and be gentle. And you can't stand in a long line now and shopping and get mad and start pitching a fit and get to the counter and say, Merry Christmas. You got, you got to understand now, we got to back up what we say. But the next few days, I want to ask you, all you children of God, let's use those two words. Not trying to get even with those that don't say it, but mean it. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I hope you have Christ in your heart. I hope you have given him your heart. If not, this year, in this month of December, from your life, that's what he wants. Before your pocketbook, before your works, before your church attendance, before your tithing checks, before anything else, he wants from you and I our heart. That's not much to ask for, but that's all he wants. So, he was born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Ghost. A miracle, a miracle that God chose for him to be transported from heaven to this earth as a little baby. And it's a miracle today that you and I, if we're a Christian, can say we're Christian. It's a miracle. That same, by the same Holy Ghost, by the same Holy Ghost that drawed us and revealed to us the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know what? To us as Christian people, every day should be Thanksgiving. And every day should be a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Thank God today, because he lives you and I can face tomorrow. From Clark's Chapel Baptist Church, we say to all of you today, Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Angels, we have heard on high. 
Sweetly singing oh.